drink it up with my mind and every pore of my skin. It was exactly the right hour to pass groups of 20-somethings leaving the bars, which was one of the comforts of 1985 in Los Angeles. Bailey wore an army jacket with a white work shirt, untucked like a boy's, and cigarette jeans she was too wide for. Cody Castile was perfectly named, everyone said, like someone from a tall tale. And Cody's girlfriend, Delia, had haunted eyes and a wavering voice that would have created tension even if she weren't an alarming beauty in a clingy Asian dress. But her zany smile said being introduced with a handshake was about the funniest custom ever invented. The real reason I'm writing about all this is that my 27-year-old son, Philip, has asked me to. He has the idea that the music and art scene of L.A. in the 1980s was special, more egalitarian, more open to sensitive souls than today. Your generation had it all, he used to say, with true admiration. Later, when his illness made him surly, he'd add, didn't you? Worrying that my move to Mount Washington shredded the last of my son's mental armor could just be my special talent for taking on guilt. But it also goes without saying that, as the man with a plan, I'm culpable for whatever fiasco now comes down. He began pacing in the lighted shed and complaining, first to the girlfriend and then to me, about hearing other male voices on the line. Now the messages that crash in are from Philip's mother. The pet team has been called. He's painting swastikas on the windows. This will be the number of the nurse's station. What other books did he store inside those boxes? And were they all, too, about the death of beauty? Do you think it's easier to be cynical, I ask? No, Philip says, but I aspire to be cynical. <laughs>